Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Sucre with the Arizona Trauma Association, and this is Trauma in a Flash. Trauma is a leading cause of death between the ages of 1 to 45 years, and bleeding, also known as hemorrhage, is the single most common cause of preventable death and trauma. In 2013, the American College of Surgeons and representatives from multiple agencies of the United States federal government convened to establish a national policy that would enhance survivability from active shooter and mass casualty incidents. This was called the Hartford Consensus, which over time has led to the creation of the international Stop the Bleed campaign. The American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma is leading the effort to provide education and materials to save lives from uncontrolled hemorrhage. More information about this can be found at bleedingcontrol.org. This seemingly simple idea is in reality a massive undertaking and comparable to the CPR campaign that began in the 1960s and 70s. The American College of Surgeons, like the American Heart Association, understands that the power to save lives starts with everyday people. Through efforts from bleedingcontrol.org and by other grassroots campaigns, over a million citizens have been taught on how to save a life by stopping hemorrhage. In this episode, I want to stick to some basic principles. First and foremost, direct pressure is a powerful tool that everyone has the capability to perform. Superficial wounds with bleeding from the scalp, face, and extremities typically are well controlled with direct pressure. Oftentimes, I see the application large amounts of gauze piled up on top of the bleeding wound. This, without direct pressure, is ineffective in stopping hemorrhage. In fact, Utilizing less gauze allows for better pressure application. If bleeding stops with direct manual pressure, then a pressure dressing can be attempted. If this fails, continual manual pressure should be utilized if possible. Deeper wounds or wounds with large openings may not easily be controlled by direct pressure alone. Packing the wound tightly with gauze followed by direct pressure greatly improves the effectiveness of direct pressure. When bleeding from an extremity cannot be controlled by pressure alone, a tourniquet should be applied above the area of bleeding. Many FDA-approved tourniquets are available and all function essentially in the same manner. They have a wide surface area and can be tightened utilizing a windlass to achieve cessation of blood flow. Tourniquets are an excellent tool and have minimal downside. FDA-approved tourniquets that are applied properly can be maintained in place for up to four hours before any long-term negative effects occur such as irreversible limb ischemia or permanent nerve damage. In the United States, it is extremely rare to see transport times to definitive care that are more than 30 minutes. Therefore, in cases where the first responder believes that there is significant bleeding that can't be controlled by direct pressure, a tourniquet should be applied. Other areas of bleeding that may be more difficult to control and are not amenable to application of a tourniquet include the neck, the axilla, and the groin. These areas contain large blood vessels that, when injured, can result in massive hemorrhage. If possible, utilization of hemostatic gauze should be used to help control the bleeding while direct pressure is maintained. Ultimately, the power to save lives starts with a well-prepared first responder that initiates rapid control of bleeding. I encourage everyone to find a Stop the Bleed course in your area. Just go to bleedingcontrol.org and click on Find a Class. Just like CPR, everyone has the power to save a life. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Trauma in a Flash. Mm -hmm.